Welcome back to Exercise Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss lactic acid and lactate. We're going to see that there's actually a minor difference between the two, so they are technically different molecules, but more or less we can treat them in a similar way. We're also going to see how they play a role in exercise in this video and the next video, and we're also in the process going to dispel some common misconceptions about lactate and lactic acid. Okay, So what is lactate and lactic acid, and what is the difference between the two? To answer that question, let's go over what the common misconception was. So here we have exercise, and we're really talking about high-intensity exercise. So things you couldn't maintain for a very long period of time, uh, such as sprinting down the street or very high-intensity weightlifting okay, or resistance training. And the theory was is that exercise, high-intensity that is, would produce a lot of this molecule, which is lactic acid. Okay. What I want you to notice about this molecule is we have here this oxygen right here in the molecule, and then there's a hydrogen on there. This is actually the acidic hydrogen. And the theory was that lactic acid, once produced through exercise via the glycolytic pathway, would then just ionize in solution, whereby this hydrogen ion would just come off like this. And so you'd be left with, first of all, a hydrogen ion, H+, which we know H causes acidification. It drops the pH. And then this right here, which is really just the conjugate base of lactic acid, this is lactate. So lactate has simply lost that hydrogen ion, and therefore this oxygen develops a negative charge. And it turns out that while there's some things in here that are true, for example, if we have lactic acid, it could uh, dissociate into lactate and a hydrogen ion. And it turns out that hydrogen ions do in fact acidify solutions like the blood or tissues, but that this process does not happen. Okay, so first of all, when you exercise at high intensities, um, you don't actually directly produce lactic acid. Okay, you do produce lactate directly, but you don't actually produce the acid form of it, which is lactic acid. It also is true that hydrogen ions will acidify tissues in the blood. However, this specific process actually does not occur. So that's the first misconception. And in fact, it's still uh, thought that way in some circles. So here on this slide and also the next, we're actually going to discuss what actually happens with lactate or lactic acid. And we're going to see uh, how it produces acidification of tissues and the blood. So uh, we have glucose right here. This is a major nutrient of cells such as skeletal muscle. And glucose will be converted into pyruvate by the process of glycolysis. Of course, that's a pathway. It's a 10-step process. And we get pyruvate. But then pyruvate can be converted into lactate through the action of lactate dehydrogenase. In other words, glycolysis generates lactate directly from pyruvate via the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, which we typically abbreviate LDH. This structure up here, this is lactic acid. This is not directly produced by glycolysis. So when we look at glycolysis, glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvate. Notice that this pyruvate, this oxygen right up here, has a negative charge. That's because at physiological pH, all carboxylic acids, which is what this functional group is, they're all ionized, meaning the oxygen here will have a negative charge and it won't come with a hydrogen ion. Okay? So you produce this form of pyruvate. You do not form pyruvic acid. Okay? It's pyruvate. Then, when lactate dehydrogenase reacts with pyruvate, it stays the same way. So this carboxylate stays in the ionized form, so you're not actually forming lactic acid, you're actually directly forming lactate. So, if lactate is formed, then where does the hydrogen ion come from? Well, it turns out it doesn't directly come from lactate. It comes from another process. And remember, that's because lactate is already ionized, so it can't dissociate a hydrogen. There's no hydrogen on this oxygen to dissociate. So that hydrogen ion has to come from another source. And it turns out that it's actually going to come from something called the strong ion difference, which is what we're going to discuss on the next slide. Okay? And we'll actually come back to this either in this video or in the next video. So what is the strong ion difference? Well, if we're talking about the blood, let's say, so the plasma, which is the fluid in the blood, the plasma wants to maintain something called electroneutrality. Now, hopefully what you realize at this point is that there's all sorts of ions in the blood, 
Okay, let's look at this equation right here. For example, in the blood we have positive ions or cations such as sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and of course some hydrogen ions. We also have anions in the blood. Anions are negatively charged. Those include chloride, lactate, and urate. And of course, in the context of this video, we're really only concerned about the hydrogen ions as the major cation and lactate as the major anion. And it turns out that if we actually calculate something called the strong ion difference, this AS stands for apparent, but it's basically just the strong ion difference, it's equal to the sum of the concentrations of all the cations minus the sum of the concentration of the anions. So let's suppose we have a situation, such as high intensity exercise, where the concentration of lactate builds up. So we have an increased concentration of lactate. Well, this term that we'd be subtracting in this calculation would actually be greater, right? Because we're increasing the amount of lactate. Presumably the amount of chloride and urate would remain constant. So if we're increasing the amount of lactate, then we're subtracting a larger number. And so the strong ion difference is actually going to drop, okay? So let's think about it this way, what's happening. Okay, this bar right here, this is before the onset of high intensity exercise. Each one of these regions in a different color represents a different anion. Okay, so this gray region right here in the middle, this is our lactate. If we have high intensity exercise, notice what happens. The amount of lactate is going to increase. Okay, so our total amount of anions is going to increase. And that's not good because lactate is negatively charged. In other words, let me put it to you this way. Let me actually make a copy of this, move it over here, and then let's actually look at the same thing but for the cations. Let's actually move this over here. Notice what's happened. We now have a pretty big difference between the amount of anions total and the amount of cations. That is not good because that draws us away from electroneutrality because we have a lot more negative charges in the blood than positive charges. We can't have that. So what has to happen is in order to maintain that plasma electroneutrality, there has to be an increase in the amount of cations. Okay? Look at these cations. Is there any easy way without consuming anything from the diet? Is there really any way to get extra sodium, potassium, calcium, or magnesium? Not really. Okay? I mean, yes, there's, there's movement of those ions across membranes, but not really a way to significantly change the amount of cations in the blood. But hydrogen ions are relatively easy to add to the blood, right? Because everything has a certain amount of hydrogen ions on it, so just dissociate some of those and they go into the blood. Right? So in order to maintain the electroneutrality with this increased amount of lactate, the amount of hydrogen ions increases. Notice over here for the cations, this top gray region is the hydrogen ions. Notice that it's increased, and now we have these two ion meters at the same level. Even though we have a lot more hydrogen ions now, the amount of cations is now basically equal to the amount of anions. Okay? And this allows us to maintain electroneutrality. Why? Because the amount of positive charges is roughly equal to the amount of negative charges. So where does the hydrogen ions come from when you increase lactate? It doesn't come from lactic acid. Decreased pH is not caused by lactic acid. Why? Because glycolysis doesn't produce lactic acid. It produces lactate and there's no dissociable hydrogen there. Therefore, the hydrogen ion really comes from this physical principle of the blood where the solution wants to maintain electroneutrality because it's a lower energy state. So when lactate increases and you have more anions, like we do here, the only way you can increase the number of cations to balance out that charge is to increase the hydrogen ion concentration. So when you have an increased concentration of lactate from high intensity exercise and the amount of anions rises above that of the cations, the only way to maintain electroneutrality in the plasma is to increase the number of hydrogen ions so that you can have electroneutrality, meaning cations equal to the amount of anions, roughly. Okay? And that increased hydrogen ion concentration is what drops the pH.
Okay, so I just wanted to clear that up because it's a very common misconception that lactic acid is actually what's causing the dropped pH of the blood during high intensity exercise. That's not what it is. It's simply the fact that you're building up lactate and then hydrogen ions have to be increased in the blood to maintain electroneutrality, but it's not done through lactic acid. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. In the next video, we're actually going to discuss how chronic endurance exercise, so endurance training of different kinds like marathon training, can actually increase your body's ability to actually get rid of that lactate when it's produced. And it turns out it's going to be uh, due to a number of things, but one of the major things is a switch in the type of lactate dehydrogenase that we have. Um, some of them are actually good at producing lactate, whereas others are good at consuming it. And then in that video, we'll also discuss something called the lactate threshold. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.